Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we're going to stone guard the entire underside of the Alfa Ferrari. Welcome back to a very, very brisk home built here in, uh, <laughs> in Australia. If you guys are wondering why I was away last week, uh, myself and Mr. Jeff uh, got away for a holiday for the first time in uh, a couple of years and we went to Singapore for the week, uh, which was quite nice and warm and toasty in the, um, in the 30s every day. Uh, compared to coming here where it is currently four degrees in, <laughs> in Australia, or at least where I'm in a particularly cold part of Australia. Um, I thought I'd just quickly, yeah, sort of have a bit of talk about uh, car cultures because uh, seeing a little bit of the car culture in Singapore, um, I always thought we had it rough here in Australia compared to uh, the US and the UK because we pay a lot for cars here. But um, we've got nothing on Singapore. Uh, to just give you an idea, I thought I'd just do some uh, baseline prices and I'll work all in US dollars just to uh, keep everything uh, sort of consistent. So basically, I thought I'd take... For example, a, uh, a Porsche 911 GT3. So a base GT3, uh, the, the base list price, whether you can get it for that or not is uh, irrelevant. It's more just what the base list price in the US is roughly 161,000 US uh, dollars. In the UK, it's roughly 160,000 US um, dollars. In Australia, we pay 266,000 US dollars. So basically, it's, it's over $100,000 more starting price um, in Australia. Um, in Singapore, they pay 528,000 US dollars for a new GT3, starting at. Um, the other sting that, that uh, Singapore has is basically they're limited with how many cars they can have on the road because they're a small island with a large population. Uh, the government said there's only so many cars, so um, this year you can have so many new cars. So if you want to buy a new car, you have to bid to get your certificate of entitlement, which basically means um, you can drive that car for 10 years, sort of 10 years, uh, roughly sort of 10 years worth of registration. That is about an extra 100,000 uh, Singapore dollars on top of that, so 72,000, 73,000 US dollars on top just to register the car. Um, so yeah, they really get uh, get stung. And then obviously after that 10 years, they have to pay that $100,000 again. So if you buy a, uh, a new Camry, which by the way, in Singapore, a Toyota Camry starting price is 130,000 US dollars. And then you need to pay the $100,000 registration on top of that. It's crazy. So uh, yeah, I, I won't complain too much about the prices we pay in Australia anymore. But uh, yeah, needless to say, uh, yeah, some places are quite expensive. I know there are places in, uh, in Europe that are a bit more expensive and they do have more restrictions. But uh, anyway, that gives you a bit of an overview. Enough of my yabbering, uh, let's get back to the Ferrari. So um, as you saw last time, I went through and did all the seam sealing and uh, that was quite a messy job, but uh, needed to be done. I wasn't too worried about the bottom of it because I'm gonna go over the whole bottom of this car with some stone guard to, uh, to basically protect it and, uh, and seal it in. And uh, it gives it a good uh, robust finish that uh, will handle rocks and stuff like that. So um, I'm not one for having shiny, painted under carriages of the cars because I use my cars. If you see Harry, uh, Harry is now covered in stone chips and, um, and, and use bug guts and all sorts of stuff. So that's the plan with the Alfa Ferrari as well. I want it to be a very neat car. I want it to be finished well, but um, it's gonna be used. It's gonna be driven. It's not gonna be just a showpiece that sits around and does nothing. So um, let's start by getting this in the booth giving it a bit of a clean up and uh, start getting ready to put some stone guard on the bottom. All 
right, so um, as you've seen, I've spent a lot of time now. I went through, I uh, prep sold the entire underside of the car again, just to clean it up, even though I did do it before I did the seam sealer. Um, I also sanded the entire thing before I did the seam sealer, so it's all ready to go for the uh, underbody stone guard. And uh, obviously now I've gone through and uh, masked up all of the edges, just enough to sort of catch um, the edges of the overspray. I'm going to be try and be reasonably precise with uh, the spraying. And I've also gone through and just uh, taped from the other side all of the holes so that I'm not getting the stone guard spraying through over all of the interior and other bits where I don't want it. So uh, the whole thing is done all the way along. I've even done um, along this bottom edge, uh, this underside part, I've, made, I've taped it along here, so this lower section of the sills is going to have the stone guard on it on the outside, but this still will be painted body colour uh, afterwards. It'll just have that stone guard uh, finish. So now it's time to uh, get the stone guard out and start getting ready to paint it. Okay, and this is what I'm gonna be using on the car. This is uh, from Concept Paints. It's a body deadener Schutz. And to spray it, um, this stuff's actually quite easy to use as long as you get yourself one of these, which is a Schutz gun. Um, they're really cheap. I got this ages ago on eBay, I think, and it was about $15 or something, I think. Um, and uh, I've just added a regulator onto it so that I can adjust the, uh, uh, the air pressure here without having to go through and adjust at my compressor. I can adjust it on the fly and get the right, uh, the right pressure going out. And basically, it's... It's a very, very simple Venturi system with a big nozzle, so it just splatters the paint out. So you get that rough um, underbody uh, stone guard effect uh, as you spray it out. The bottle screws straight into, uh, into the gun itself, so it makes it nice and easy. And I'm gonna go through now and, uh, and just give it a, a nice couple of coats over the entire under, underside of the car to uh, make sure that I have a nice, even consistency. Let's get painting. All right, so we have the uh, stone guard on the entire underside of the car. Um, it was quite a lot of work, quite uh, a lot of time. I ended up having to thin it out a little bit to get it to spray. It was, uh, at first it was a little bit too thick and, uh, and really struggling to get it to come out and coming, sort of spitting. So I thinned it down a little bit of multi-purpose thinners and uh, that's uh, thinned it down nicely and it's looking pretty good. I am quite happy with the uh, underside of the car. It uh, sort of hides some of my sins, hides the seam sealer. It just, uh, it just looks nice and neat now. So uh, we are ready to move on. All right, so I've got a fair bit of overspray still in the engine bay in a couple of spots. So I'm gonna go through now and just clean it up before we uh, go too much further, before it all sets up. It's starting to get a bit of a skin on it, but uh, let's tidy it up and uh, save us some work later. All right, I'm really happy with how this is coming out. Uh, I went through and unmasked it all while the paint is still soft, um, makes it a bit easier. It's, it's sort of firm enough that it's got a bit of a skin on it, but it's obviously not completely, uh, completely done. So uh, it just makes it a bit easier to, uh, to pull it all apart. Speaking of pains, obviously when I did all of my epoxy priming, I missed a bunch of bits, which uh, I discovered now. So I've got the, uh, the front cow panel, um, this aluminium um, sort of uh, closeout panel that goes over the top of the radiator, and my uh, underbody uh, guard. And I just remembered, I've got a bash plate that I've got to do it as well. So I'm gonna clean these up now. Uh, I'm gonna leave the body to set up overnight, and uh, hopefully this afternoon, I can uh, sand these back and 
brush treat them, go through the same process and get some epoxy primer on these guys so that we are ready to move forward onto the next bits and pieces. Okay, so I've gone through now, I've put the, uh, the rust converter onto all of these parts, wiped it off with some water with some bicarb in it. Somebody asked in the comments how much bicarb I use and I just sort of shake some bicarb in. Basically, um, the rust converter is an acid, the uh, bicarb is an alkali. Um, I'm just sort of making it, uh, the water a bit more alkaline so that it can uh, sort of help neutralize that acid. Uh, I wipe it off pretty much straight away and blow it all out as you might have seen. And uh, I've gone over it now with some prep sole with wax and grease remover just to clean it all up. So these things are all ready to go. So it's back into what we did before. Same thing with the epoxy primer. So let's get that done right now. All right, so it's the following morning and uh, the underside is all set up, it's all dry and it's looking really good. And basically now what I wanna do is I wanna just finish off the underside of this car completely and then I don't need to touch it again. Uh, and what that means is I'm gonna go through now with some uh, underbody black, just, uh, just uh, sort of a, a single K uh, underbody black, just to touch up any bits where the stone guard was a little bit thin in areas or uh, bits where I taped up some of the bolts and stuff, just to make the whole thing nice and neat and black. Now, I can go straight over this. It doesn't need to be sanded. Uh, it doesn't need to be modified, so it's uh, just ready to go. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Put a little bit of uh, black on, just, just finish off the underside so that it's all nice and even. And that is the color it's gonna stay, because uh, I don't like having painted colored undersides of the cars. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a driver's car. I like to drive these cars and uh, I don't go crazy on the cleaning underside. So I don't need a polished shiny uh, underside of the car. It can be black and uh, sort of hide the mud and mess of actually using it. Well, that is the underside of the Alfa Ferrari completely done. I don't need to touch it, don't need to paint, do anything anymore. It is completely done. That is how it's going to stay. Nice and black stone guard. Uh, I'm quite happy with that finish. It's a nice, hard, robust finish. Um, and uh, I've even gone through and sort of done all in behind the light buckets and things like that. This side will be uh, body color in the engine bay. Engine bay is going to be nice and neatly finished. But uh, um, I also went around the front and did all around the headlight buckets and, uh, and that sort of thing because you sort of see through the grill. I want that to just be black and disappear. So uh, those parts have all been done in black. So now it's time to move on to the interior. Okay, so now that the underside is completely finished, the next job to tackle is the interior. And um, on this car, I'm going to be doing it entirely black on the inside as well. Um, mostly because I did uh, Harry, the body color inside, spent a lot of time making a nice shiny orange interior on Harry. And then, found that it was a real pain in just a few little bits where carpet didn't meet up with like uh, seat rails and things like that, uh, that you saw the orange that I had to then go back and sand and paint it black to make it disappear. On this car, the entire thing is gonna be covered in interior, so you're not gonna see it anyway, so I'm not gonna paint it body color uh, inside here. I am going to paint it all black, so everything here, uh, overall the same sealer, it's uh, it's all ready to go. So I'm just gonna go through now and uh, and use the same subframe black on this entire interior uh, and make it one color so that it's hidden and uh, and just disappears. So let's do that. All right, and we have an Al Ferrari that looks a little bit like a panda at the moment, but uh, the wheel arches, everything is all done. That's all stone guarded. And then uh, some subframe black is all through there. The interior is completely black. 
So uh, everything is blacked out, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a nice, neat, consistent black uh, underside of the car. And that is how it's gonna stay. So we have really made some great progress today. Uh, you can also see inside the boot here, it is all completely blacked out. So that is a huge milestone. And I am over the moon that we actually have the entire underside and inside of the Alfa Ferrari done. Completed, painted, that is the way it is going to stay. I am very, very happy with the result so far. So um, that is uh, oh, it's such a big step. That means that um, next week, it, uh, it may actually be time to put the car back onto the, uh, the dolly. I'm no longer going to be on the rotisserie. Everything for the rotisserie is now done. Um, the, uh, yeah, so the next step is get it on the dolly and then start doing the bodywork and getting it ready for paint. Um, and, uh, and actually maybe even revealing a color, but, uh, that's not yet, not yet. We still got a little bit of work to go yet. So, uh, hopefully, uh, you guys will join me for that. But, uh, I think that means now it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, in 1973, a replacement for the V6 engined 246 Dino was released with the V8 engine Dino 304 GT4. This is the first production mid-engine V8 produced by Ferrari, running a transversely mounted 3 litre V8, making 255 horsepower. Pininfarina was upset that its rival Bertone was given the job, which was a modern angular body with a 2 plus 2 configuration. Originally released as a Dino, the sales flagged because buyers were not keen on the high price point considering it wasn't badged as a Ferrari. By 1976, in an effort to improve sales, they were officially rebadged as a Ferrari. So if you see a Dino 246 on the road, badged as a Ferrari, know that it never actually left a factory like that. In 1975, a D-board version, the 208 GT4, was released in Italy to keep it under the 2 litre tax threshold. All right, that's such a big step to get the entire inside and underside uh, all painted and uh, at finished at that level anyway. Um, it means that uh, next week we can actually get onto uh, a lot more sanding because you guys know how much I love sanding. And, uh, we all love sanding around here. It's our yes. favourite thing to do ever. Mm. Yes, but at least it's getting closer to me revealing the colour. So uh, not I, yet. I, I don't know. It looks like a... A licorice all sort to me. <laughs> One of my favourite lollies. I said a panda with the uh, the sort of the. It almost looks white. It's grey, obviously, but it almost looks white and black. It looks Aww. very panderish. Very panderish. Anyway, that's right. it for this week. Like and subscribe if you want to follow Jeff. I mean, just like it'd be nice to like. Anyway, and if you want to follow him a day earlier, of course you can on Patreon without ads, which are annoying. Yes. Sorry, I feel like I'm raving a little bit but it's quite cold here and yes it's definitely not what it was like last week in singapore no i mean it's not cold <laughs> compared to north america or europe but it's still well, about... they're in summer we're in winter so <laughs> no but they're winter temperatures yes it's getting true. to around zero celsius yes. so it's still it's still it's chilly. cold it's brisk it's brisk yeah anyway thank you for those who've commented on my uh jumper selection it's uh <laughs> much appreciated <laughs> anyway i'm Okay. Really? All right, guys. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> see you guys. From the top, we have to go again. <laughs> hey, guys. This is multiple millionth time Jeff's making me do this. Evil Jeff. That <sighs> too got the sneezes because I'm like, go. That too. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know if the wink works, but <laughs> we'll leave it leave it in because it's funny. <laughs> no, I'm just here to make fun of <laughs> a deboard version. Is that what I am when I don't have to do Mrs. Jeff? Deboard. <laughs> <laughs> mean. <laughs>